Um, it has been a particularly fractious last month, it has to be said, uh, and and one of those fractious events um, happened uh, yesterday, the, yes, yesterday, um, in a scrap between Nationals uh, police spokesperson Mark Mitchell uh, and the um, police commissioner Costa. Um, and it related to uh, whether or not the police are really policing gangs in this country. The growth of gangs over the last five years has been a phenomenon that we have not only witnessed on our television screens, but probably personally noticed in terms of the visibility of gang-patched individuals throughout the country. They would appear in good measure to be... Have, to, 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 be conducting their activities with um, a deal of impunity that has made most of us put law and order very close to the top of uh, the um, issues that will inspire us to vote at the next election. And certainly it was a prominent, you'd have to say, a very prominent um, issue uh, for the Hamilton West by election last Saturday. Uh, it's not just Ram Raiders, but also the 501s returning and the um, increasing, I have to say, escalation of gang-related activities. Well, that occasioned uh, a bit of a scrap yesterday between the Nationals uh, spokesperson on police, uh, Mark Mitchell, uh, and also Superintendent, oh, sorry, Commissioner Costa, um, over whether or not the police were doing enough for gangs. Um, to review the week, uh, sorry, the year, and also to talk about that in specific, we are joined by Mark Mitchell. Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Um, welcome to the You're show. Welcome, Michael. Um, yeah, thanks, Michael. And listen, you, you've had listen. You're no stranger to taking on gangs as well. So you know, you, you know how important it is to send a really clear message to them that um, that there's zero tolerance uh, for the misery that they peddle uh, and the havoc they create in our country. Absolutely. So um, that's why I'm interested that you barreled. Commissioner Costa yesterday. What was the background yep. to that, mate? The background of that is in the last 12 months, um, it's, for example, the response to the gangs when we had the um, drive-by shootings, we've had almost a 60% increase in, uh, in gang membership in this country and every day people are seeing gang members taking over public spaces, intimidating, abusing members of the public and um, yeah, and, and, put, and our, our police have to face um, you know, firearms-related incidents related to gangs six times a day. So um, they're out of control, uh, they're more violent, they're better armed, and they're willing to use their firearms. And, and so the government's response to that, with the pressure that we're putting on them, was quite simply to come out and say, well, we've stood up Operation Telfero. The problem with Operation Telfero was it was a smoke and mirrors. It was business as usual. And what I mean by that is the frontline police officers that were going about their normal general duties business were just asked to record any contact with a gang member, any property seized or any firearm seized, just put that on the spreadsheet and record that against Operation Telfero. There was no substantive, um, there was, I think there was about 40, if that, maybe 35 dedicated staff um, on Operation Telfero. So it was quite simply business as usual. But the government kept on standing up in Parliament and kept on making press releases, trying to deceive the public into believing that they'd stood up a substantive response. And the police commissioner stood by and let that happen when he knew that that was wrong. And I was getting emails from his staff daily saying, this is a big deception. This is Operation Telfero is not a substantive gang task force. It is quite simply business as usual with us recording um, our contacts again uh, in that spreadsheet. And I, did, did Police Commissioner Costa accept that that was a valid interpretation? Well, he came to. If you look at the committee, he came to the committee, and he couldn't even tell me when I pressed him how many dedicated police officers were on Operation Telfero because he knows the answer to that is deeply embarrassing for him and deeply embarrassing for the government. And this has been a trend that they've carried on, is that when we had the 500% um, increase in ram raids and aggravated robberies happening all around the country, the government came out and announced the retail crime um, squad or crime unit. You know how, members, how many members are on that? Two sworn members and three civilians. And they were still in the process of actually recruiting those and standing them up when they made the announcement. There was nothing the retail crime unit was set up or established that could have done anything about the um, about the ram raids and the aggravated robberies. It was quite simply a joint venture that they'd done with Retail NZ to deal with um, uh, shoplifting and um, loss prevention. But they tried to sell that to the public, that that was their response to the ram raids and the and aggravated robberies. Complete deception again. Then they rolled out their retail crime fund 
and they say, oh, $6 million, we're going to get out there, we're going to support our businesses. As of today, Michael, 13 businesses have had physical security measures installed as a result of that announcement. And quite simply, again, the retail crime unit, I don't know who's actually responsible for rolling that out, but if it's the retail crime unit, then they just don't have the capacity and the bandwidth to do it. So the government just keeps on making these big announcements, trying to deceive the public into believing that they're doing something, when in actual fact they don't have the capacity, they haven't planned it, it's knee-jerk, and, um, and the policies end up being a complete failure. No, that's fair enough. Um, now, you're a former police officer, so I mean, one of the great things about the National Party having you as a spokesperson is that you'll have all those contacts with people who are still serving and you know the operational procedures of that particular organisation. I guess the question I'd be asking you, um, so just put yourself a year and you've been elected. <clears throat> it's a National Act government, uh, maybe with New Zealand First as an outright, I don't know. Um, you're, the, you're the Minister of Police. The Police Act's a very odd beast, as you know. You can't operationally interfere in what uh, Costa and his um, cohorts are doing down the road uh, in Molesworth Street, but you can right. vote them resources. What would be the changes that you'd make in 12 months' time from now, Mark, to ensure that the police headquarters yep. are doing the job and are reporting truthfully to Parliament? Well, make, make, make no mistake that a, that a Cabinet and a police minister can be very clear um, to the police in terms of what their expectations are, what their priorities are, and that it's, that it's the police minister's job to ensure that the police service has been effective. And it's well supported, and, and without a doubt, that, that's where my focus will lie. I, I would never um, involve myself in operational matters, nor would I want to interfere with those. In fact, I've asked the police commissioner myself to, to reinforce um, his operational independence with this government currently, um, and, and actually be prepared to stand up and back his troops rather than cow to um, uh, political pressure. So, um, so that's that's number one. Number two, uh, some of the things that I'd be focused on um, straight away in the first 100 days is passing some proper legislation that actually has got some teeth to it and will give the uh, police some new tools to really start disrupting and getting stuck into the gangs and also being able to be a lot more effective in their response to um, youth and juvenile offending. Um, the other thing that I'd be doing is I'd be having very serious conversations with my Cabinet colleagues that are responsible for organisations like Oranga Tamariki and Health to ensure that the police are freed up to get back on their core role and that these other agencies actually stand up and start to do the role that they're meant to be doing. Because if you actually had a look at the, um, at the full select committee hearing yesterday, you'd see that I got stuck in around um, who is responsible for these juvenile offenders that are, that are terrorising the neighbourhoods that they're currently living in. And, um, and finally, the um, commissioner had to stand back and look at Sauranga Tamariki. Uh, mm. The police is a very, very effective agency. They're professional and they'll always find solutions. But what happens is when you've got lazy, other lazy government agencies, more and more responsibility keeps getting passed to the police, and I intend to reverse that um, if we're back in government next year and I'm police minister. Yes, um, you're right. They have a lot of work to do that would not dare really consider their bailiwick. But I'm looking now at the principles, right. the principles of the Police Act, uh, which they've quoted, they always quote to you, um, the one about policing services being provided independently and impartially. But I'm looking at the yep. next section of that Act, Mark, which says the functions of the police. And the functions of the yep. police include, A, keeping the peace, B, maintaining public safety. And there's also yep. something here that says community support and reassurance is another function. I don't know that I would consider the New Zealand police as discharging those functions today, would you? No, they're not. Strictly speaking, they aren't. The sad thing about it is that they are stretched, um, that, that thin blue line is stretched to breaking point because they're trying to stay on top of a 41% increase in violent crime, uh, an almost 60% increase in, um, in gang members, and a 500% increase in ram raids and, um, and aggravated robberies. So they're, they're literally poking their fingers in the dikes as quickly as these um, new, new um, holes appearing. Um, and and that's, part of the big, that's part of my real focus in terms of getting them back into their core role, back to basics policing, um, highly visible, um, police officers back on the beat, uh, developing relationships with retailers and shop owners and the communities that they serve, and um, and that's effective policing. And um, of course, in a modern modern police force, you've got new technology and you've got um, uh, you know you've got things now that are available that weren't available 10, 20, 30 years ago. However, Michael, I firmly believe that the, that the basics of the policing today are the same as they were uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. 
And that's quite simply being visible in your community, building those relationships and being able to respond when they ask for help. Okay, um, Poto Williams is, um, I see, retiring from uh, Parliament completely um, and yep. obviously will be um, out of Cabinet. In good part, do you think that one of the reasons that the police have got so PC and woke um, is because of her having been in charge or is it a problem within the police administration itself that those sort of people tend to rise to the top because they live in Wellington and Wellington's a very different place than the rest of New Zealand? Well, I think, you've hit, I think you're absolutely right. You've hit the nail on the head with Poto. I mean, I've got nothing against Poto and she came to Parliament like all of us because she was passionate about making our country a better place. However, um, I felt very strongly that um, she wasn't that interested in the police portfolio and she certainly wasn't providing the leadership that was required and that's why I said it is one of my goals to try and get her moved on and out of that position, um, which finally the government, um, they folded on that and they did it. Um, in terms of the leadership in the police, I worked with um, Andrew Costa when I was Associate Minister of Justice and he was Deputy at, um, at Justice, a, a man of integrity. I'd never, ever question his integrity. Very smart, very strong on policy. Do I have confidence in him at the moment as, as in leading our police service? No, I don't, um, because I think that he's got to unshackle himself from the soft-on-crime Labor government, whose policy settings from day one have been headed towards emptying our prisons, uh, which they've almost got to a 30% emptying of our prisons, while at the same time you've got a 21% increase uh, in violent crime, repealing, prioritising things like repealing the three strikes legislation, which is a, our only tough piece of sentencing legislation that we have. Um, and, and by the way, just before I came on the show with you, I had a police officer that was, uh, that was um, knocked over uh, trying to deploy spikes, um, serious injuries, um, probably will never fully recover. He's only 23 years old, and the offender for that just got 12 months home deep. So get to sit at home, play his Xbox. Yeah. So there's no consequences. Sentencing's broken. Um, Paul uh, Goldsmith is going to do quite a bit of significant work around that, discounts, etc. Um, but you know we've got to. And with a with a with a service like the police, Michael, from my own experience, they don't really give a stuff who's down in Wellington and what the politicians are doing, but they do figure out very quickly whether or not they've been supported and whether they've got they've got their back. And at the moment, they, they certainly lost confidence in the current police commissioner pretty early on. They don't feel like he's got their back or that he's focused in the right areas. And, and to be honest with you, that's a, a, a pretty fair thought when you, when you think about the fact that they're dealing with a massive increase in violent crime, um, uh, you know, an increase in gang numbers, increase in firearms incidents, and they're sitting down in, in the ivory tower in Wellington uh, doing reviews around um, whether, the, whether our police force is fair and equitable in the way that they police. Their priorities are completely, totally in the wrong um, place at the moment. They just need to get. They need to get back to basics. They need to get behind their staff. They need to listen to them, give them the tools, and allow them to get on and start to get control of our streets again. Well, I can tell you, under the current leadership of the police, that ain't going to happen. So you're going to have some fun if you get elected. I have to say, Mark. Yeah, well, we we recognise, and you'll hear Chris Swanson talking about this. Is it's not easy, Michael. It's going to be. It's not going. It's going to be a lot of focus and a lot of hard work. Um, but you know, the, the alternative is not worth thinking about because we're heading in the wrong direction. And I've been going around. I did about fourteen public meetings in the last few months around the country. And if there's South Africans there, they'll always come forward and say to me, "We came to this country twenty years ago because it was safe mm. and much safer than South Africa. Mm. And now we're seeing the same levels of crime, ram raids." Um, you know, carjackings, things that we never really had to deal with before. And if we don't stop it and we don't get in control of it, then that's the road that we're heading down. And we should, there's no reason why we shouldn't be the safest country in the world. And that's what my focus is next year if we get back into government. All right. So I'm going to put the acid on you. You yep. have one lever um, if you don't, if the police aren't doing something and you've put your expectations. And that is you can move police commissioners aside. That's happened before police ministers and governments have in the past. Um, is that an option for you as well? So, that, of course, that's an option, um, but I'm, I'm not going to go into that. Ultimately, that's to decide. That's something that has to be consulted with with um, Chris Luxon. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we are, very, but we are very determined and we are very focused <coughs> that we are going to get the police back up on their foils. We're going to support them. We're going to have their back. Um, we're going to give them the legislation, the tools that they need and refocus on a back-to-basics policing and um, and if you have a commission that doesn't want to go in that direction, then you really 
you know, you, you're not, you don't have much choice but to have a change. Okay. Mark, thank you very much. You have a very good Christmas. It's nice to talk to you. Um, that is Mark Mitchell, the police spokesperson. Can I just say, if I was a police commissioner um, and I was looking at the polls at the moment and I was Mr Costa, I'd be saying to my p- family, um, another year, I think. What do you think?